What is up guys and welcome back to episode number 17 out of the Leeds United career mode and we kick this episode off by showing you we are changing a number of the players shirts here at Leeds. I asked you guys to let me know what you thought we should do in terms of player uh, numbers and you guys gave me some suggestions so you can see me swapping around. One of you guys suggested we switch Emre Jan to number 6 um, and then there was Emre Moore to I think number was it 9? Um, or number seven, and then Marshall was even number nine or number seven. I can't remember which way around. Yeah, more number nine and, and Marshall number seven. And then I also changed a couple more players. You'll see them coming up on your screen as and when they get changed. There's Marshall getting to the number seven shirt. Suso goes to number 30, which one of you guys suggested as well. I think I switch around one of the... Uh, one of the centre-backs or one of the full-backs, I can't quite remember. It's definitely a defender that I switch around. You're going to see it now in a second. Then we give Ross Barkley number eight, even though he is currently injured here at Ellen Road, meaning that he won't be able to play um, at the moment because he is down as uh, injured, unfortunately, for the next three weeks. But we'll look at, uh, onto the uh, future and give him that number eight shirt. Yanazai then got given, I do believe, number 17. Grimaldo went to 18, and I think that was all I did. And at the time of recording this, guys, I have the Chelsea game right next to me. And Willian has just scored to make it 2-1 to Chelsea. In a game where Manchester United, uh, Manchester City sorry, have been dominant all game, they've missed numerous chances and Chelsea have come back in this in the second half. And this is why football can be the greatest game on the world because it's just absolutely amazing. Chelsea have been getting battered and yet they're going to go on to probably win this game. A lovely finish by Willian. But I have to say, I'm not a fan of Bravo. I've never been a fan of Bravo. And the fact that they sold Joe Hart for Bravo just shows here because Bravo did nothing to even attempt to say that. I mean, it's a great finish by Willian. But Bravo, yeah, shocking goalkeeping. Anyways... To talk about our episode here in number 70 of the Leeds United career mode, you can see we're playing Manchester City actually, coincidentally, for the first game of the episode, which I wasn't expecting actually. Um, we take them on here at Ellen Road. We've obviously had tough games against them in the past. We've made them like fools in the past though. And that time comes to mind when they obviously named that very much weaker side when they played against us last season or the season before that. I can't quite remember off the top of my head. But nowadays they've got a very, very good team here at Manchester City. Pogba obviously, formerly of Manchester United, came over for like 80 or 90 million pounds. It was just crazy. Um, they obviously have Aguero, people like that. They've just got a crazy good team. But ours is nothing to uh, shake your head at because at the moment our team is absolutely unbelievable. So, you know, we've got the likes of Anthony Martial, obviously out injured. He comes back soon. Ross Barkley, a couple of the other players as well eventually will come back and uh, we'll have the uh, strongest possible lineup we've got. Even with the players, though, that we, uh, we are missing, we're still a very good team. And the actual first chance came Manchester City's way. Leroy Sane, man. I don't know why he didn't take that strike on. In the end, my clearance sort of sent the goal, uh, or the strike goalwards in the end, but. Very, very poor in the end from Zane because he had a lot of space and time there to pick his pocket and uh, possibly even take a strike on. He doesn't do that, though. We then play Anwar through on goal eight minutes in. I decided to take the strike on because I thought, you know what? He's banged him in a couple of times from this sort of distance. Why not try here? I did, but this time it went miles over the bar. And into the 14th minute now, City will create their second chance of the game. Paul Pogba involved in this one. Brilliant save, though, by Bernard Leno down to his right-hand side. Keeps the score at nil-nil. From the resulting corner, Leroy Sane stood over on the left, ready to take this, whips the ball into an area. Emery Jam wins the header, kind of. It goes back, though, to Kyle Walker for City here on this right-hand side, the number two, formerly of Spurs. Whips the ball in, cleared away, not dealt with brilliantly by me. It comes to, eventually, Fabian Delph, gives it into Pogba, back to Delph. Delph here makes me look like an absolute mug. I make a tackle here with Merrickson, doesn't, unfortunately, get the ball back, but then Delph does this. That is absolutely unbelievable from the number 18. And formerly of Leeds United as well, Fabian Delph and Aston Villa, of course. Um, that's an unbelievable strike. And that's what you get when you get players from Leeds. Obviously, being from Leeds myself, I'm going to have a little bit of bias there. But that's what Leeds players are capable of doing. Um, just a shame they never even end up playing for Leeds in uh, real life because they all end up leaving the club. However, they're not doing too badly under Gary Monk at the moment, so that's pretty good to see as well. As you can see, 21, uh, 27 minutes here on the clock. Fabian Delph obviously celebrating his goal there against his former club. I felt a bit hard done by the fact that he did celebrate that. Eventually, we get the ball back off of Fernando there. I don't know how he managed to hold on to that for as long as he did. Ericsson into Anwar, and uh, it just really got caught. Uh, Manchester City were caught on uh, the attack and then couldn't get back. And that finish was an absolutely wonderful finish from Anwar El Ghazi. Bottom corner. Couldn't have been any closer to hitting the post there, but thankfully it just nestles in the side net of the post and ends up going into the back of the net to make it. Leeds United 1, Manchester City 1, all square again at Ellen Road here, just like we were at 0-0. But I have to say, City were being the better side in the opening uh, exchanges here in this game, but thankfully we got ourselves back on level terms. And it wasn't too long after that until we had the second goal of the game. I think we went into the second half at this point. Oh, no, still the first half, sorry. It was on the stroke of half time. It was Emery Morton, the left-hand side, our number nine, and given the new number nine shirt here, formerly number 13, into Ericsson. Ericsson spins on the edge of the area, gives it into Anwar. Anwar spins again, gets past his man, and drives a strike underneath the goalkeeper's hands. A low-driven shot. So OP, guys. Start using them if you're not already. I've spoken about it numerous times on this channel so far. The low-driven shots are just the best thing in this game. And while Grazi using one there to get 
get us back on a 2-1 victory at the moment as it stands, if it can, of course, stay this way. We'll be going away with the three points. However, it wasn't all clean sailing from there because 58 minutes into the game, Sane, who was brilliant on the day for City, gets the ball into Delph. I do not know what I was doing here with this tackle, but I made the stupid mistake of giving him a penalty. It's a definite penalty, no doubt. Delph's already passed the ball away at that point, and I don't know why I did what I did. But it meant that Pogba would be stepping up against Leno, formerly Manchester United man for City. Misses the penalty as it was saved at the bottom corner by Bernard Leno. A lovely save from the, uh, the German goalkeeper. Kept the score at 2-1. And as City were trying to get themselves an equalising goal in this one, they committed men forward, allowed myself to get into a position where I could possibly hurt them on the counter-attack. Anwar... Almost uh, loses out there, but gets the ball back, thankful to an Emre Jan challenge. Into Emre Moore, and Emre Moore smashes us 3-1 into the lead. A very, very good finish in a one-on-one uh, -on -one situation from the young man to give, this, uh, give us what looks like the three points at the moment, because at the end of the day, it's looking a, a very increasingly uh, you know outcome that we get three points out of this one. It wasn't a good performance, I have to say, from uh, numerous people on the pitch. Um, you know, There's only a few players that actually played out their skin. Anwar played very well. Um, Emery Moore played very well, Emery Jan played very well, but then on the other side of that, Sane, Pogba um, and a few of the other players from Man City were absolutely unbelievable. But we just managed to edge it here. Eriksen didn't have the best game in a Legion United shirt, I have to admit, he gave the ball away a couple of times and obviously gave away that penalty. But he won the ball back for us there, and Emery Moore into the path of Anwar, and Anwar completes the hat-trick to give himself the match ball. Very unselfish there from Emery Moore. Could have gone for goal himself, decided not to, and fed it into the path of Anwar El Ghazi to get himself the hat-trick and the match ball to take away with him. The former... Top scorer of the Premier League last year's top scorer, the Golden Boot winner, getting a hat-trick against Manchester City, who are uh, a very, very good side. Even though they didn't uh, finish in the top four last season, they're still a uh, force to be reckoned with in English football. And we managed to pick up the 4-1 victory here. Very, very weird game. It wasn't a 4-1 game, put it that way. But at the end of the day, I'll take a 4-1 victory. You can see we were absolutely dominant in terms of chances. City gave it a good go, though. I have to say they weren't an easy opposition by any stretch of the imagination. But at the end of the day, the quality we have on the pitch, including Anwar El Ghazi, Former Middlesbrough man as doing the business for us at the moment, isn't he? Let's face it, you know, £6 million plus Takara, I would happily pay that over and over again to get someone of Anwar El Ghazi's quality. What a player he has been for us in this career mode so far. So, I, I, you know, it was one of those signings that I made. I was sat there thinking, you know, I'd want to make a signing um, that's a bit different from everyone else's career modes. I want to, you know, pick players that people aren't using all that much. And Anwar came to mind when I saw him at Ajax. Um, but then in the end, he moved to my Middlesbrough, so I couldn't get him until this season. But I'm so thankful that we have, in fact, got him here at Ellen Road because he is absolutely brilliant. He's just next level good. You can see here as well, we've got an EFL Cup game. And uh, like always, I said I was going to sim all the Cup games at this point, barring the uh, Champions League and the Premier League, because we've won both Cups. I don't see the reason to be able to play these. You know, it just takes the series on even more. At the end of the day, do you want to see a 40 episode one season or would you rather me just sim these? You know what I mean? I don't want to uh, have one season spanning over the course of about 40 episodes. It'd just be a, a very, very long season to watch and you guys might get bored after that. So I don't want to have that happen. I just want to play the Champions League games, Premier League games and we'll sim at the Cup games. But it doesn't matter because we're actually out of the FL Cup there. Swansea beating us two goals to one. Nathan Dyer scoring the winning goal in that one after extra time. We then went into the second game or gameplay of the episode rather. Obviously that game counts as well against Villa here who have been a very weird opposition for me in uh, previous seasons so far in this Grimmauld it's been a weird one they've they've not been too great but they have caused me a bit of problems in the past when playing against them it just feels as though these are one of my bogey teams this year in FIFA and uh, it's very very frustrating to have to play against them especially when you go to Villa Park they are not easy to play against by any stretch of the imagination you can see the two teams coming out here ready for this game I think we pretty much named an unchanged side going into this one as per usual we always uh, play basically the same team other than uh, if we have a Champions League game or anything like that or if I'm uh, just swapping around the team basically. But you can see there, five games, five victories and 15 points on the board for us so far. In fact, I don't even know if we've conceded a goal yet in uh, this career mode, which is very, very weird to see. Oh yeah, we have. We just, what am I talking about? We conceded one against Manchester City. One earth am I going over? Just take no, no notice of me, guys. Just yeah, take no notice of me. But we have won every single game we have played so far. So five games, five victories. Off to the perfect start, looking to make it 6-6. Six six. You can see our same team there. Obviously, there's a number of players in there that you guys have suggested, along the likes of Grimaldo. Um, a lot of players you guys have suggested we have signed. So, hopefully, you guys will keep those suggestions coming in, and uh, I'll try and do them in the January window. And uh, if it means we have to sell a few players, then I am willing to do so. However, 14 minutes into this game here against Villa, we got our first chance. Emery Moore with it. It's a very good save, though, by the Villa keeper, who keep the score at 0-0. We then got a second chance, literally three minutes after that. A lovely ball from Moore into Yanazai. Yanazai back to Moore. Moore takes the strike on. And again, thankful to a deflection this time from Villa. The score's still 0-0. But into the second half we went, and Emery Moore was causing Villa a lot of problems in this game. Dropped there to receive the ball, gives it to Jan, Jan into Anwar, and Anwar gets himself the fourth goal of the episode, it's a very, very lucky goal, I have to say, 
The keeper makes a good save, but unfortunately for Villa, it ends up going through the uh, the hands of the goalkeeper and ends up in that uh, well back of the net, really, I have to say. But you can see from this angle, it's a very good stop initially by the goalkeeper. But for, for Villa, it just trickles over the line and it's agonising. If I've conceded a goal like that in the past, you know, I would be so frustrated. But, you know, you get those goals in football sometimes. The keeper makes a good save, but ultimately is not able to keep the strike out. And it found ourselves a goal up in this one, thanks to an Anwar El Ghazi. Wonderful finish, and uh, it was a very, very good way to get ourselves on the score sheet. Possibly not because the goalkeeper didn't make a great save, but there's just a nice ball through. The passing that was involved in the build-up, I was happy with that goal. So we went into the 63rd minute now, and Emery Moore gave the ball into Anwar El Ghazi, gave it into Emery Jan. Jan back to Moore. Moore was causing, like I said, a lot of danger all game long. Takes the strike on there, but a good save again by the Villa keeper. At this point, I felt as though Emery Moore deserved a goal, and that's exactly what the little man got as he ended up getting a header. You don't hear him get headers very often in this career, though, but he got one there in the uh, 66th minute as it went to Aston Villa nil. Leeds United 3, Emre Moore with the header. A lovely cross. I'm not sure who it was, actually, who put the cross in. It might have been Yanazai, I think, in the end, who put the actual uh, cross from the short corner. But ultimately, we were 2-0 up in the game and cruising. However, it got worse for us here because 69 minutes in, Villa got themselves a chance and they took it brilliantly. Carlos Gil down this right hand side gets past a couple of players feeds the ball into Bakuna Bakuna takes a strike on an initially good save by Leno and then the slide in from I'm not sure who it was in the end it was John Nayu gets the slide in and gets there ahead of the man just wants the ball a bit more than my defender did and then ultimately it was uh, saved again by Leno but he couldn't quite keep it out and it made the score 2-1 which is a very nervy ending to this game as we did in fact pick up the three points here with a 2-0 victory away at Villa Park however it was a very very nervous 20 minutes in the last bit of the game you know Villa at that point Got themselves a bit of confidence and tried to get a uh, equaliser in the game, but weren't able to do so. And we got ourselves another victory in the Premier League, which means we're now six games, six wins, and cruising up there. I think we're at this point, we're about six points clear or five points clear, which is mental to be that many points clear already in the season, which is just crazy. But we have won every single game, so we uh, owe it to that as well. So you can see... Doing a bit of training as per usual, getting the uh, the other players in the club to a uh, good enough overall to possibly come in the side. Uh, our Chinese goalkeeper obviously at 80 rated. Then we've got Oxford and Rose as well, the other two players involved in our training that we do. Which is, uh, you know, they're growing nicely, I have to say as well. It's, it's sort of one of those things that's, you know, getting to the point where I'm thinking about including them into the squad. Especially the Chinese goalkeeper. Because although Lono's an 88 rated, he uh, does play cup games for us as a Chinese goalkeeper. But I may have to start using him as well just to see what he's like in game. So I will at some point probably end up putting him in for a Premier League game. Uh, maybe uh, somewhere down the line. I'm not sure. If it'll be in the next few episodes or if it'll be in somewhere down the line. Maybe it'll even become our starting goalkeeper if Leno does in fact ever leave the club. But you can see... We are about to go into the second game of our Champions League campaign. We obviously won the first one by a goal to nil, thankful to an Anwar El Ghazi goal. This time, though, we take on Anderlecht away from home. A team in Belgium which are not going to be easy by any stretch of the imagination. Belgium, however, a very good side in real life and on the game. And they're the type of team that can cause upsets. Yes, they're not the greatest team in the world, but they can cause upsets. You know, there's a lot of players in there as well that people get on career mode a lot. You know, like the likes of Tielemans. Um, there's a few other players in there as well that people enjoy to get, but Thierry Mans is the biggest name there and uh, he's going to be a danger man for them because he's very, very good in the game. You can see a number of players in there that I actually recognise as well. Um, and, you know, the left midfield of uh, Anke Pom, and I'm not sure if I've said that right, you know, I probably just butchered his name, but... Obviously, Thierry Mans is the main man in this Andalek side that everybody recognises thanks to Career Mo because he has an absolutely unbelievable potential. But that was our side for this Champions League game. Remy, Origi, Eriksen, Yanazai Chan, Suso starts on that right-hand side as well. So, very, very strong squad, even if it is a rotated squad from myself. I still believe that they had the uh, quality to get a result here in Belgium. And we went underway here for this game. 28 minutes into it, we had our first chance. It came in the path to uh, Origi. Origi out to, uh, I'm not sure who it was, a Grimaldo, I think. Emre Chan takes the strike on, though. And it's a decent save. And it was held onto by the Belgium goalkeeper. But he kicks the ball straight out into play. It's won back by Eric Bailly. Bailly into Origi. Origi to Eriksen. Eriksen holds onto the ball long enough to give the ball back into Origi. And he smashes it as 1-0 into the lead. 31 minutes into the game. Anderlecht 0. Leeds United 1. And at this moment in time, we were leading our second Champions League game ever. This is only our first time in the Champions League in this series. So... You know, I want to make it as uh, far as I possibly can in the first one. Maybe we're just trying to find our feet in, the, in this uh, so far. But if you remember, we actually got into the Europa League in the second season after winning the FA Cup in the first one. And we were unable to even get out of the group in that one. So I was hoping that even though the Champions League is a step up from the Europa League, we would be able to actually get out of the group in this one. Because I didn't want to go out in the group. That was my only aim for this. I wanted to get in the knockout phases. That's what I wanted to try and do. But 45 minutes into this, Anderlecht, a lovely play from Ang Pom. I'm going to call him Ang Pom. 
I uh, yeah, yeah, I'm really I'm sorry, I probably butchered his name, but he does absolutely brilliant here. Takes on numerous uh, Legion Knight shirts, can't quite get the ball away. That's poor from me. I wasn't cleared. And Yuri Telemans, I've probably again, but is it Telemans? Yeah, Yuri Telemans absolutely smashed this home to make it Andalet 1, Leeds 1. You're going to see it from this other angle here. It was poor defending from me. I should have smashed the ball out when I got the opportunity there with my centre-back. But in the end, I tried to play it out of the back, being a smart ass, and it didn't work out in my favour. And in the end, Thierry Mans absolutely rifle one home to make it 1-1 one, one in Belgium. So we're back to all square level terms here as we went into the second half. And in the 57th minute of the game, Pereira right back got into a position to be able to play the ball through the middle. And he played a lovely ball into Dibok Origi. And you've guessed it. A same outcome as what happened in the first half. A lovely ball into the path of Origi and he makes no mistake with the chance making it 2-1 here 60 minutes into this one but I have to credit Perea for that one. The right back did exceptionally well and then found a lovely through ball into the path of our main man today in uh, up front. So when it's the, uh, the dying minutes of the uh, second half here, last 20 minutes or so, and Ericsson again, they were trying to commit men forward around, like, trying to get themselves back in the game. And Origi involved in this one again, but this time, unselfishly, puts the ball into Remy. The goalkeeper started to come out, but Remy just hits this first time into that bottom corner on the volley. And a wonderful goal from Loic Remy. Hasn't featured as much this season so far as he did last season. He was a, a vital part of the, of the team last season. But he's knocking on now in terms of age and he's uh, actually decreasing overall. So I haven't really got him in my plans too much. But he comes on here and plays a Champions League game and absolutely rifles one to make it 3-1 there. And that was the way the game would end. So you can see in our second Champions League game of our career and the series... We were thoroughly dominant all the way through and deserved the three points there. So that's put us on six points now in the Champions League group. And at the moment, we have one more team to play. And then we will play everybody in the group. And we'll have to play them one more time to see if we can get out of the group. So they'll be in the coming episodes. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of the Legion Night And if you have, smash that like button. As always, if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. If you never want to miss an upload. And I've been Danny. And I'm out. Adios.